Welcome to SciBite, everybody, where we explore the mysteries of the infinite universe and all the tools and technologies science use to get to the bottom of it all. My name is Heather, as it is every every week, and not on the Skype line is Chris. Well, hello, everyone. Yeah, I've conveniently replaced Jeremy with science this week because he took the <laughs> week off because he's prepping us for PAX. The whole network shutting down this weekend, Heather, and we're going down to yep. PAX. And yep. uh, he is deep in the like list of checklists. We need to bring like equipment and cameras and all that kind of stuff. And then, of course, he's got to figure out like what seminars and what things and what oh, yeah. booths like match what shows and what can't what people need to be at those things and all that kind of stuff so it is important that is massively important but uh that's okay because we actually picked a really great topic for this week's episode because yep. it's something i kind of love talking about yes in fact uh we covered this didn't you come on jupiter night with us uh back uh, yes i did yeah like in march right? year- yes uh to boldly go in march yeah talking about the hundred year spaceship that's right. It, now, this is this whole idea of building a ship that a lot of people could live on that would almost be like, uh, like have a habitat and like yeah, have like, like, like what if we had a starship that could be in space a hundred years? Right. You know what would be required? Now, is it a little morbid that the reason I'm kind of interested in this is because it's like one of these scenarios is what happens if like we need to get off our planet? Because that's kind of really oh, well, where this. That, and it seems like the only way we're really ever going to get somewhere is, like, just this massive trek. It doesn't yeah. matter what it's going to... what Even if we get really fast engines, it's still going to be a lot of travel. It's not going to be like Star Trek. Oh, yeah. It's... In, I mean, the fastest stuff we have now. I mean, Voyager 1 is our fastest uh, spaceship currently. And it would take 70,000 years or so for it to get to the nearest star. Right. So even if we had some sort of, like, massive propulsion breakthrough that could, like, dramatically reduce it, yeah. you're still, you're just talking about physics here. It's like, it, yeah. and you got to wonder, too, if, uh, if, it's, if it's a hundred-year ship, then you're, what you're really talking about is more of, like, a generational ship. So yeah. how do you build and something where you have facilities in place that to, to train the next can, generation? Yeah. Yeah. Or do you do it so that there's caretakers and then there's, you know, little embryos that get ready and are ready at the end of the trip. So that's that's the whole idea. It's not yeah. really building a spaceship. There's right. no actual money. All the money that they have is not actually going to build anything. It's symposiums to get people together. And they're getting a wide variety of people together. Everything right. from scientists to politicians to lawyers to sci-fi writers. Getting everyone together and saying, hey, what are all the issues we need to think about? This is you know, really where you have to start, right? Because you have to get, yeah. like, all of the experts in these various fields yeah. just even communicating uh, with the same language, really. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and it's, it's sometimes it's funny for people to realize that they actually do pull in sci-fi writers. It's because sci-fi writers have been thinking, you know, the extremes, you know, what happens when everything goes ethically wrong, huh. you know, and what happens on these kind of things. And they, they spend a lot of time thinking about and try to make it realistic. So they pull in these people to think well outside the box right. of what normal, you know, PhDs and lawyers and stuff think. And sci-fi of. authors are definitely really good at that. Yes. So I get, okay. Outside the box, but trying to be somewhat realistic. That's kind of cool, really, because sometimes that's what makes us fall in love with a really great sci-fi novel is the world is yeah. so immersible because it's so believable. Yeah. Right? Oh, well, that, that's the other thing that they're trying to do is get hype going so that it's, you know, people think about it. And they're like, oh, wow, what if we did have a spaceship that goes 100 years? I mean, Scotty inspired how many engineers that got us to the moon? Right, right. A lot. I mean, I think he was at some talk at an, at a, at an engineering college where a lot of people were going on to NASA, you know, and they took him in. And Yeah. Uh, so how many of you were inspired to get here by Scotty? And there like, was a documentary on it that like showed and they're all, like, yeah, <laughs> there was a big documentary on it that showed like all the different kind of scientists that were inspired yeah. by different, even Star Trek or other sci-fi technologies. But well, yeah. didn't, didn't, didn't the symposium just, did it have some sort of announcement recently? Because this showed up on my radar like a couple of weeks ago. People were talking about this. Now we talked about it before. Is this a different program than what was happening during the Jupiter Night episode, or is this no, like an announcement? No, it's the same program. It was, it's a one-year program. Oh, okay. So we've hit the year mark. So no. what happened in March was. That it kind of went rolling last fall. Oh, okay. It, it was kind of un- they were kind of flying it under the radar, and then somebody let it slip, you know, just in the middle of talking. And they, you know, you know, seems like the hundred year spaceship and blah blah blah. And everyone, went, whoa, 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 wait, hundred year spaceship? Tell us more. And I then see. Had, then they had to go back and be like, uh, hold on, oh, hold on, I'm almost ready for an interview. 
Oh, and press release. <laughs> and they're getting like serious too, because like I saw some information about like there's some money, like NASA's throwing in like a hundred thousand yep. dollars, and DARPA's putting in like a million dollars, or, or like yeah. combine it to a million dollars. Is yeah. it, what is this money going to? A lot of it was going towards symposiums. They've held a couple. There's okay. one coming up in the first of September, and you know, and it's putting these you know symposium or conferences together. So not like together. warp drive. Okay. So I was, kind of, I was kind of hoping you were going to say warp drive. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Well, not that we know of, at least. Right, okay. there may be, there's a track of people talking about it. Uh, it's kind of close. I guess I got to have that before I get warp drive, right? Yeah. So. They do have pots of money available for people who say, hey, we've got this great idea of, it's like starter funds. Yeah. It's like win a grant to get something rolling. It's like you like okay. five hundred thousand dollars, I could get this company rolling, and it would really do stuff. Yeah, so it's incentives. It's in, it's yeah. incentives for them to sort of come up with, uh, yeah. to get the people really thinking about getting some of these things in action. Yeah, it's incentives so it's to create getting action. Getting people together to to think about it, to really start thinking about it, is that you know, how would we decide where we go? Who? Hmm. How would we decide who would go? You know, how? You know, what kind of environments would we need? You know, this isn't just like, you know sailing across the no you know the ocean blue you know to the americas and not knowing what you have to decide i mean you still have to take your stuff on the trip you put a few you're pretty sure there's going to be trees and grass and little creatures to kill and eat when you get to the other side oh there's not yeah you're no you have to bring everything you need with you yeah well and i I, I think you know you put some notes in the in the show notes regarding like just putting some of these distances in in, in oh, perspective. Yeah. And when you look at this, you think about just like a, a hundred year spaceship is probably going to have quite a large crew, and you'd probably need a large crew, and you'd probably need a lot of like people to back up other people. So you know you wouldn't have yeah. just like one scientist. You'd have to have like a whole crew of scientists, a whole team of scientists, and then yeah. you know you got to feed all of these people. Yeah. So uh, it seems like the amount of water you'd have to bring with you, I, I could see like all of the issues they're going to have to come together. I mean, really, the, one of yeah. the very be- beginning challenges from a fundamental standpoint is it seems like to get off the ground, they're going to have to build a ship like this in space. You know, because you, yeah. if you're going to have to have all of these compartments and it's just going to be so massively huge, you wouldn't be able to launch something like that yeah. from Earth. Like like the space station. I mean, you you throw up components of it and put it together in space, and then you can you know. I guess so. Move through space. I guess we could. Yeah, with I guess it. we we did that with the space station. Right? I keep hitting yeah. the uh, the other screen. Uh, we did that with the space station, but it seems like yeah. the space station was one thing. It was one kind of object, but the technology to assemble something to this scale seems like way beyond our grasp right now. So just the oh, whole well, getting yeah. off the ground level right now. I don't know. Maybe yeah. you could. Oh my gosh! I don't know if anybody Uh-oh. said this in the chat room, but why couldn't you build it on the moon? Gravity is considerably less. You could have mm, easy. You could easily store. There is some. It's kind of a yes and no. I know that there is some math involved. In, you know how much effort does it take it to throw off Earth? How much effort does it take it to throw off the moon? It's got to be less, right? If I recall right? correctly, I may be wrong on this, but I think the math says that throwing off the Mars is actually easier than throwing off the moon for long distance. No kidding. Really? And it may have to do with the fact that you have to deal on the moon. You also have to deal with Earth, or which direction are you going? Yeah. You know, well, see, but why would you throw, why would you put the component, components up in space, land them again, and then try to get off again? It, well, I mean, because it seems like you'd have less gravity, and then you you know I don't know. I guess I guess that's not it. I guess if yeah, I was just thinking because you could use like you could use like. Like, I was thinking, like, 2001 Space Odyssey, where, like, there was that massive base they had, and you could just build and store, and, you know, you'd, you could have crews yeah. sleep, and you know, they'd have places to live while they were assembling the thing, but still working in conditions where maybe they could operate with something at that scale. What happens, I mean, what happens probably is you have a whole bunch of different components that get thrown together in a giant, globby, not pretty or artistic contraption that can fly through space, and then it can break apart into all its little various components again, and land wherever you are. Because you're not really going to... I mean, this isn't the Voyager. You're not going to land the whole starship down on the ground, and it's not going to be beautiful and pretty. Did you, ever, be- did you ever see that crappy sci-fi show that ABC had or something for a little while that only Uh-oh. lasted like a season? And it was like a corporate-sponsored version of a long, deep space travel? Because I was thinking, hmm. like, they were going... I, I can't remember if they were going to Alpha Centauri, which is... Uh-huh. 
which you have here in the notes, 4.35 light years away. Yep. So uh, that would take, uh, at 38,000 miles per hour, it would take 70,000 years to reach Alpha Centauri. Yeah. So and 70 that's the speed that Voyager 1 is going. And Voyager 1 is... It's I the mean, fastest thing we have yeah. that we built. I mean, if you had a spaceship that you could drop an atomic bomb behind you every three seconds, it'd so, still take a couple hundred years. So for the sake of this show, they came up with like a faster propulsion system. All right, yeah, we'll, we're, we'll, we'll accept that. We'll accept that concession. Except Th- then we'll what they did, something. what they did to fund the whole trip, which I could kind of see happening because this mm-hmm. is just the sick culture we live in, is uh, it was like vlogging from space the whole way yeah. with corporate sponsorships like sort of interweaved in there. Yeah, a- and so it was a like a corporate version. Space. And it was a corporate version of deep space travel. Now, mm-hmm. aren't we kind of seeing the beginning of that right now with the discontinuation of the space shuttle and sort of things like the mm-hmm. X-Wing project and these other independent private sp- spaceship projects taking off? If well, we extrapolate degree, that... Why wouldn't you want something in the private sector? I mean, the government, it just spends money, you know? That's it, true. It gets a budget, it spends money. If you're a corporation, you want it to work. You want it to work at the right price. That's absolutely right. But uh, the, the, the alternative to, to, to that forward. is if you're the government, you have, you know, I mean, True. they are able, they just, their, 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 their means are just they're to no end. They can, they built the freaking space. They took us to the moon in the 60s. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, if true. you look at what the private industry can't even, can barely get us out of orbit still in 2011. So, yeah. I mean, in terms of actually getting us there, they're the only ones that have proven to be able to get the job done. And they've been doing it for like since the 60s. So they're, they're continuing to get the job done. True. Uh, now, I agree, though, if the private industry could get it together, then maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Yeah. I mean, there's a line. What was it? There was a rumor going around years ago in the astronomy community that Coca-Cola wanted to put up a flying satellite just that was a Oh, sign. my gosh, like a billboard? Like a billboard that flew around the Earth or that they could land on the moon. That had to be a joke. You know, and it was just this rumor, but it was this idea of, of no, 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 that, that, that's commercialism gone bad. No, 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 that's terrible. Uh, so uh, there's, there's, of course, a line. You're like, eh. No, no way. That cannot happen. I do not want to look up into the night sky and look no. at the stars and see a Coca-Cola sign. In fact, I heard about um, there is some sort of new uh, billboard system just like down in California right now where a guy mm-hmm. has an LED system hanging behind a plane like, like smoke writing, only now it's LED lights that he does at night. And that just right there seems cool. distracting. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, any other thoughts? I, we, we were going to make this a little briefer episode since it is our PAX yeah. week, but is there yeah. any other notes you want to touch on on this episode before we wrap? Uh, so you know, to... Mars, you always have the most awesome show notes, and I know, <laughs> I know you and Jeremy do plug it, but uh, you have all kinds of examples yeah. in here that yeah, it's really Yeah, if you're really, really interested read. in this, there's a whole bunch of links in the show notes. Go mm-hmm. check them out. There's funny videos that go along with it. There's, because there's not a lot of physical stuff, but there's a lot of information out there about this yeah. kind of stuff. And Yeah, and there's a lot of people thinking about it right now, and it's a fun yeah. time. Unfortunately, we may or may not get to be the generation that actually participates in something like this, but we do get to be the generation that began really thinking about it. And that's yeah. that's fundamentally if exciting you get the ball right there. Rolling, yeah. I mean, we're that generation. We're the yeah. generation that started the spark. I mean, that in in itself is extremely invigorating. So, yeah. it's fun to participate at any level and uh, if we just kind of got your appetite wet and you want no information, go over to jupiterbroadcasting.com, look for episode 13 of or no, 14 of Cybite and yeah. Then uh, right in there, you'll find all the links to stuff we talk about, show notes, mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And also, all the various versions and formats you can download the show, the show in, as well as the RSS feeds and iTunes links. If you want to get this on a mobile device, yeah. that would be the place to do it. I think that's everything, right? I think so. Well, right. if you want to follow us on Twitter, you know the places to go. JB underscore Mars Base for me. Yep. And uh, you could email us at SciBite oh, yeah. at jupiterbroadcasting.com for your show ideas or any questions you might have for a future Q&A episode we might do. Absolutely. And I am Chris LAS on Twitter. And also you can find me on Google+. Plus. Just look for Chris Fisher. All right, everyone. Well, thanks for watching this week's episode of SciBite. And uh, Jeremy and Heather, we'll see you next week. <laughs>